Hey everybody, welcome back to Heartplan Production. Today's the day I have the ARC XL from Gosney. I'm going to set it all up on the stand and get a couple pizzas made. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Stay Very excited to get this up. So before I get the oven up and going, the new Arc XL, I'm gonna get the stand set up. They also have what they call a booster. I'm gonna to try to get one of those to test out too. So if you have counter space, you can use the booster. If not, they have a stand. It's very similar to the dome stand you see back behind me. It's just a little bit simpler and more compact. Let's get it unboxed and set up and then we'll get the oven going and get some pizzas too. So I'm gonna fast forward all this so you don't have to sit there and painstakingly watch me put this thing together for the next two hours. So I will cue some nice relaxing music and some speed this up, let's go. Okay, I got everything unpacked. It was very well packaged, very well put together. It comes with all the tools, screws, screwdriver, or it's like a hex key screwdriver, and a little thing with extra parts just in case you lose some. So let's get this put together and we'll get going. So we got the stand all set up, now let's get the oven going. Good thing about this one, it's about half the weight as a normal dome, so I can easily pick this up. Looks good. All right, much easier with two people. And you wanna make sure you screw it on. So these four little feet, there's four little rubber feet at the bottom. Those go right into the little holes on the stands. They're very easy. And the last thing you do is screw this in. That connects the stand to the oven. Make sure you get that nice and tight. And after you move it around a little bit, kind of go back and re-tighten it. Here's the little flue vent. Instead of having a flue, like a chimney flue, this one just has the vent up here. Stand took me a little bit more, probably I'd say about 45 minutes total the time opening the box and actually getting it all set up. And that included having to redo two of the legs because I put them on backwards. So you could probably do it in a half hour if you really tried. That's where the igniter is. So in, you remove the thermostat, the temperature gauge, and then this just unscrews. And this is where you put the battery in. So we'll put the battery in. Comes with a triple A battery. Screw that on. Plug this back in. It's reading Celsius. This is so much easier to read now. You can tell it has a temperature reading. And this is awesome. Because, oh, there we go, back in Fahrenheit. The great thing about this new temperature gauge is, is that this is, it has a spring fitting up underneath the stone floor. So it actually gives you a real time stone temperature. So the old one used to have an ambient thermometer in the back and most pizza ovens are like that too. This is one of the only ones made that has it. It's the, basically reads you the exact stone temperature. So when that hits the ideal temperature for whatever type of pizza you're gonna make. So for me, I like it right around kind of that minimum seven to 800 degrees, typically around 850 to 900 degrees. When this reads that, then I'm, I know I'm ready to make pizza. Or if it's cold out or you're making a lot of pizzas, you can always get a good idea of what the floor temperature is instead of having to use a infrared, kind of a laser thermometer. Look at this thing, pretty awesome. Let's put the stands up, we'll get some measurements. Like I said, it took me about a half hour, 45 minutes. Well, 45 minutes really. It looks great. This one has the stainless steel like the dome, so the S1 is just all ceramic. This one's a little bit nicer. Some of the things I am noticing, the stand is a little bit less. There's no shelving, so that's kind of a cost savings measure, I'm assuming. Makes it much lighter and easier to assemble. 
It does have a place to put your propane tank, which is convenient for rolling around. One thing I'm not too crazy about, these wheels, the old version has heavy duty casters. These are basically a heavy duty plastic. So I don't know how long these are gonna last. If you're not moving it around, it shouldn't hurt too much, but those are definitely not as nice as the original dome stand. Before I get lit up, I wanted to actually talk about some of the measurements. So the difference between, this is the XL version. So this is the larger, there are two versions of the arc. One is the arc, the normal one, which is a basically a 14 inch opening for 14 inch max size pizza. This is the XL, which is 16 0.8 inches open in the opening from easily get a 16 inch pizza in here a 16 inch full-size peel will easily slide in here it is 20.3 inches deep and it's 6.8 inches high from the stone floor to the ceiling i know a lot of you are going to ask me all the different measurements so with the tables spread out wide i'll give you some ballpark extra it's about 45 inches wide at the widest point the highest point from the bottom of the ground to the top of the oven is about 56 inches give or take let's say 56 to 55 to 56 inches high the entire oven by itself including the feet is just about 14 inches from top to bottom as i mentioned 16.8 in the opening the actual door opening is just right at four inches so plenty of space here just the stand let's see from the ground to the opening is just about 46 and a quarter inches high from the ground to the floor here. They do have some of the accessories too. I'm not sure if the mantle for the dome will fit on here. It looks like it might. I don't know. I'm assuming they're gonna make another mantle for this also. Okay, we need to put this in. We need to put the flame guard in. You can see the flame is recessed on the side here. This should just slide right in. It does, very easy. You can see that. That is pretty cool. They're calling this the lateral side burner. I think this is actually, from what I've seen, this may be one of the best in class home pizza oven burners. Let's get it lit up and test it out. I also forgot to mention that the stone is removable on this. It comes with this nice little key, kind of like the Dome S1, where you can slide this under the edge and actually lift up the stone if you need to. In case you ever have an accident or you break the stone, you can replace it. I like how it has, instead of having to move the tank around separate, it has a nice little spot. Put your propane tank, whether you live in the UK and you have the more slender one, or you have the 20 pound US standard tank. It has these caps too, quick connect. All right, let's turn it on a little bit. Arc XL is up to temperature right now. The stone is reading 850 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some pizza ready. I'm just gonna do two margaritas to test it out. If you haven't made pizza before, these Gosney ovens are amazing. I'm a huge fan. Go ahead and get the pizza made. Go ahead and get this stretched out. You see a lot of people throwing the dough up in the air. You don't need to do that. That's just all for show. It's just as easy to do it like this. Just forming the crust right now or the cornichon. You want to make sure you leave all that air. Okay, we're going to stretch it out. Instead of throwing it, it's easier just to do this. You get a nice circle. Perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and get some sauce. Always just San Marzano sauce for Neapolitan. You never want anything else in it, just tomato flavor. Very light on the sauce. Some Parmesan, you can use Pecorino. I actually like Pecorino better, I just don't have any. Put the basil on now. I get a lot of comments about putting basil on later. This is the original way to do it. This way it helps incorporate the basil flavor into the actual sauce. If you put it on at the end, you just have raw basil flavor, which isn't necessarily the Neapolitan way. It looks pretty, but it's not necessarily the way it's done originally. That's good. Let's get some cheese. 
some fresh mozzarella not too crazy with the toppings it gets too heavy and then you end up having a blowout in the oven and makes a huge mess so you're better off being sparing like especially the first time you use it get some olive oil there we go let's get this in the oven the first thing I like to do is warm it up a little bit get a little semolina on there just to make sure any moisture okay we're gonna slide it under one two three look at that perfect then you want to stretch it out a little bit more and this is a great way I know I have a 12 inch peel so this will be exactly a 12 inch pizza let's go ahead and get this up in the oven you can see it's exactly 900 degrees of the stone this should be perfect I like to let it sit for about 15, 20 seconds before I even turn it to make sure you, you don't get anything, you mess up the bottom. Okay, let's turn it gently. It's good to put it right back in the same spot again. So far, so good. I really love this burner. Just makes it so nice. This looks absolutely amazing. I'll turn it one more time. Let's check the bottom while we're doing this. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. Okay. It's been just about a minute. Let's go ahead and take this out. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Right exactly at the one minute mark. Gonna make one more quick pizza. There's Tico. He thinks he's getting something. That last pizza was one of the better pizzas I can remember making. Absolutely delicious. The dough was spot on. If you haven't already tried making a biga dough, so biga is basically the Italian version of sourdough. It's a pre-fermented dough. I will try to put a link in the description of this video. If not, go to my YouTube channel or my Instagram and you can find my, my recipe for how I make mine. It takes a few days. I let it ferment in the pre-ferment in the refrigerator, a cold pre-fermentation for two days. Then on the third day, I take the Biga starter out and then I make the final dough, adding the rest, another bag of flour. And it takes about three or four hours. But not hard, just takes a little bit of time. Olive oil, most important part. Get a lot of questions about this cruet, this olive oil. I'll have a link in the description for this too. You can find them on Amazon. Okay, let's get this thing loaded. A little bit of flour on there just to make sure there's no moisture. One, two, three. Final stretch out. Okay, let's get this pizza in the oven. Watch that. Absolutely beautiful. This is the most critical part of the pizza. Oh, got some air underneath it. Let's let that out. Right, there we go. Sometimes you get a little air underneath and it lifts up like that. Okay, let's turn it. Let's get this one out too. Look at that. Ooh, another great looking pizza. Wow, what an amazing oven. I had a lot of fun putting this up. This oven is pretty crazy. I love my Gosney dome and I was really i mean i was excited to test this out but i knew it was going to be smaller and i didn't think it was going to be as fun or as good but they have managed to take kind of everything i used to love from my smaller rock box and everything i loved with the gosney dome the larger oven and made a more compact more affordable version that's even better some of the functions on this thing are absolutely amazing the new lateral burner in this is is great that is a phenomenal design i expect that design will probably carry over into the dome 
oven also because it floors, it floors up. It frees up the entire surface of the stone so you get a full 16.8 inches for huge pizza. So you can easily get a New York, 16 inch New York pizza in here. It's very compact and narrow. So if you live in an apartment, now I have an airplane. Let me get, wait a second. Let it go by. <clears throat> I made myself a little cheat sheet because there were so many things I loved about this little oven. I didn't want to forget anything. And I know there's not a lot of full reviews out there. So I wanted to make sure everybody knows exactly everything that I know from using this oven to make pizza with. So one of the things I love about it is, like I already mentioned, it incorporates, if you've had a Gosney rock box, it has all the great features of the rock box, but even better. It's small, light, portable. This thing only weighs 58 pounds, so it's less than half the weight of the original Gosney Dome and almost exactly half of the S1. So it's very easy. You can move it around with one person. A two makes it easier. On the stand, very easy to roll around. I love the fact that it's actually 16.8 inches wide at the front. So you can actually get the full 16 inch peel through the door in the opening without any problems. I love the new lateral burner. That's amazing. I'd say it's probably one of the best burners out there of any home portable pizza ovens I've used before. I love the new temperature gauge. This gauge is amazing. It almost spot on. It tells you it's mounted up under the stone. So you get an actual reading of the temperature of the stone. So you don't have to use the infrared gun anymore. You don't have to wonder if the air temperature versus stone. It still has amazing, it's smaller, but it still has amazing insulation. This thing's still probably about 800 degrees. I can touch it. It's hot, but I can touch it. I'm not going to really burn myself. This is great. It doesn't have quite as much insulation as the dome. I think it has uh, two la double layers. The dome has three layers. So it's a little more insulated, but this is still absolutely amazing. It's still industry leading. The size of it, the width of the stone interior is 16.8. It's from the front to the back of the stone is 20.3. And it's 6.8 inches from the stone to the ceiling inside. Those are internal. I said it's already 58.5 pounds. So it's very easy, very light to move around. It also has a removable stone. So if you ever have an accident or break or crack the stone or you leave it out in the rain or the freezing temperature or whatever, you don't do something right, you crack the stone, you can pop this out with a little tool they give you. You can actually replace the stone very easily. It comes right out. The control knob is very precise too. So it's not just kind of high and low. You can finesse it in between exactly the way you want it to get the exact temperature to maintain the exact temperature you want. So if you're gonna do like some roasting, some meats or vegetables, you can fine tune it to the exact, pretty much the exact temperature you wanna cook it at. I did measure the width of it. So on the stand too, it's about 32 inches wide. So it can easily fit through a door if you wanna store it in your garage. So there's no problems with that. It's all around. This is just an absolutely amazing oven. So this is the XL, the ARC XL. This is gonna be $799. It goes on sale March 6th. So make sure you subscribe to my channel because I believe they're gonna send me a discount code. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you go into my Instagram and follow me there. So when this comes out, if you wanna buy this or the smaller ARC 14 inch, shoot me a note, DM me. I'll make sure I give you a discount code so that way you can save a little money and get this new amazing oven. So this one's $7.99. The smaller version is going to be $6.99. The stand is $249. And they also have the booster, which is a little bit less expensive. They're going to have a cover available. They're going to have two new peels, a new placement peel and a turning peel. They look absolutely amazing. They're very high end, very high quality. So this is propane only. So there's not currently going to be a natural gas version. So this is going to be propane only. You don't want to use wood. You don't want anything else. It'll avoid the warranty, etc. And then honestly, for this size oven, propane is the way to go. It burns hotter. It's cheaper. It's so easy. It's going to be in bone white like this one, kind of a cream color. And then it's going to be off black, which is like a flat matted black color, which looks amazing also. Last but not least, I'm going to go on the record. And I don't like to say anything bad about anything, any ovens, etc. Like I said, if, I, if you're seeing a video of it, that means I love the product. If I don't like it, I'm not going to make a video about it. I'm gonna go on record and I'm gonna coin the term, this is a Karu killer. So if you've been looking at the Uni ovens and they're right about the same price, it's around $7.99 just for the, the new Karu, in my opinion, blows that one away. So for the same price point, you are getting twice the oven. This oven is absolutely amazing. The stone on this is this thick, probably twice as thick stone. 
The insulation's amazing. The look is amazing. You don't have to mess around with the door, etc. Make sure you subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me comments. Any questions you have about it, let me know. I'll try to answer every single question I have. Again, please subscribe. Please follow me on Instagram. It really helps. We'll see you next time. Hey everybody, welcome back to Heartland Productions. I have the new Arc XL. Can't wait to test it out, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the full review.